Hey and welcome. I'm Hammy and in this latest exploration of everything Overwatch lore and story related we're taking you on a journey through the lore and easter eggs of Rialto Italy. A new escort map, Rialto holds a significance in the past and present of Overwatch through its ties with the Talon organisation and as the site of the Venice incident, a mission eight years ago from the present day of Overwatch where, apparently, it marked a change in the fortunes of Overwatch that would eventually lead to perhaps to its downfall, as well as the start of the rise and strengthening of Overwatch's adversaries, Talon. Quick run through the map, its lore, some easter eggs and details, time codes are in the description below if you want to skip, and there'll be some speculation at the end on what we've learned about Overwatch lore from Talon and of course Overwatch Retribution. Firstly, the lore and what we know of Rialto. Well, it seems that it's set in the present day of Overwatch's timeline and the Italian government has taken great steps according to the map bio to preserve Venice and the results are striking. Apparently in this picturesque city you can sample regional cuisine, enjoy a relaxing gondola ride with your own Omnic gondola operators, visit the Galleria d'Arte Omnica or simply take in the sights with a stroll along the canal. However, underneath the beautiful tourist surface something slightly less savoury still lurks. Now, from Overwatch Retribution, both eight years ago and the present day in terms of the Masquerade comic, we've seen a little bit more about Rialto's place in the Overwatch world. In the Overwatch Retribution recent comic and mission as part of the Overwatch Archives event, we saw a Blackwatch strike team of Gabriel Reyes, Genji, McCree and Moira dispatched to try and take care of Antonio Bartolotti, a member of the Talon Council and noted arms dealer amongst other things. Overwatch wanted to question Bartolotti over his alleged involvement in an attack on Overwatch facilities in Oslo as well as other places around the world. After an attack on a Blackwatch facility being constructed in Rome which left Gerard Lacroix, Gabriel Reyes' good friend in hospital, the Blackwatch team was dispatched under the usual cover it seems of plausible deniability from Jack Morrison. He couldn't officially sanctioned the mission and left it to Reyes to make his own decision on whether it would ultimately help Overwatch keep the world a safer place through any actions he took. The mission went according to plan until after baiting from Antonio that he would merely be released due to his government contacts in Friends in a short period of time, Reyes elected to execute, or so it seems, Antonio, turning the mission which was once a retrieval mission into an assassination. With McCree seemingly dismayed at this outcome and angry at Reyes for the actions, the strike team managed to fight their way through increasing numbers of Talon forces to the roof of a restaurant where they were able to be evacuated by a Blackwatch pilot. After this however, Blackwatch's existence was in the open and no about and Overwatch would come under increasing scrutiny. With further investigation into Blackwatch's activities, governments beginning to protest at violation of their sovereign territory in terms of incursions by the Blackwatch team and more, it led McCree to wonder in the debrief after the Venice incident whether this is where everything began to go wrong. Now fast forward eight or so years, if we assume that Rialto is actually set in the present day, then Venice, Italy and perhaps Rialto still hold a significant seat of power for the Talon organisation. In the events of the Masquerade comic from around Doomfist's release as a hero, we see Doomfist, Widowmaker, Reaper and Sombra return to Venice to reassert Doomfist's place in the Talon leadership with some, shall we say, heavy-handed negotiating tactics. Okay, that's a brief summary of Rialto's law. Now let's go and have a tour of the map and some of the details. Firstly, we start in Hope Square in the attacker's spawn with the Museum of Omnic Art. Now, Venice and Italy seem to be quite progressive in a sense to have an Omnic-only art gallery or exhibition. I couldn't imagine this, for example, in some places like London. We know, of course, the attitude towards Omnics in King's Row is certainly a lot less enlightened. The sculpture exhibition by Leonora Botruvio has a variety of interesting abstract pieces. Now Leonora here follows the trend at Overwatch of creating Omnic names by adding bot into or around various names. Let's not forget Alfred Glitchbot, of course Alfred Hitchcock, the Hollywood Omnic film director who is inside the payload car on the Hollywood level. Uh, his voice lines are in my playlist below if you fancy checking those out. Now in the King's Row Uprising level outside the cinema as well as of course in the theatre here we can see Puccini's Botska. A riff, of course, on the famous Puccini opera Tosca. So, Leonora Botruvio is probably a riff on Vitruvius. Now, more than 2,000 years ago, Vitruvius lived as a Roman architect. He's very famous for rounding up and sort of codifying, creating a compilation of architectural thought and techniques in De Architectura, the Ten Books of Architecture. Now, Vitruvius also did a lot of work on proportion. And he also did this in terms of biology. His discussion of perfect proportion 
proportion in architecture as well as the human body led to Leonardo da Vinci drawing a famous Renaissance drawing called the Vitruvian Man. Now for those not familiar with the period known as the Renaissance, it's broadly speaking a transition from what was known as the Middle Ages to the modern era covering between the 14th and 17th centuries. With a renewed interest in Roman and classical Greek philosophy and concepts, there was a big resurgence of learning based on classical sources, of which Florence and Italy were initially at the heart of things. Now, I take a brief moment to explain this because it's very, very key to Rialto and a lot of the references on the map. The Vitruvian Man, drawn by da Vinci probably around 1490, is based on the correlations of ideal human proportions. You can still see it today at the Gallery dell'Accademia in Venice. It's been there since the 1800s. And if you have a look at the outside of the gallery and its structure and the theme of the architecture, I think you can see the references and how much Blizzard's art team have put into making Rialto looking like Venice. Uh, da Vinci probably needs no introduction to you. One of the great polymaths or people with expertise or proficiency in so many different fields of the Renaissance. He's a credited inventor, probably most famous for his paintings such as the Mona Lisa and the Last Supper, but also a sculptor, scientist, musician, interested in cartography, map making, writing, astronomy, and so many other things as well. And in the streets of Rialto, several other Renaissance figures feature, such as in Monteverdi Square. Monteverdi was an Italian composer and choir master. He was one of the pioneers in the development of opera. The Calle Tintoretto is named after Tintoretto, he was said to have painted with such speed and with very bold brushwork compared to his contemporaries. He got the nickname Il Furioso. You can see a very dramatic characteristic to his work. I mean, compare his and Da Vinci's Last Suppers, for example, for a look as to how painting styles and fashions could evolve over the Renaissance period. We do have a few other buildings such as Il Infiume Divino, the Divine River looks like a place where a little bit of bottling of various drink is going on. As we move towards the main courtyards, there's the Gelataria Alamia, an ice cream shop. Now, as we move into the main square, you'll notice that we're playing effectively the Retribution Blackwatch mission backwards. Now, when I got to go to Blizzard along with other content creators for a Retribution event recently, we were told that it's actually a lot quicker and easier for the team to start making these events if they build them around a map first. So they build the map first and then build the event based off the back of that. Obviously for things like King's Row Uprising, the map already existed and they had to fit in PVE as it were. So as we go through this map over the bridge, we can see the Opera House, the Theatre, Bel Canto, beautiful singing, beautiful song of course, with a Botska performing the reference which I explained earlier. As we go over this bridge, the Honor Bridge, we can see the old fish shop here and the road name here is the Fishmonger's Bank or Fisherman's Bank or Shore. We have a new clothes boutique in Carasini and in De Croixo, I think we have have some kind of manufacturers or artisan type shop maybe making something here it seems to have forges maybe jewelry but finally as we round the final corner we come towards what must be as we will see inside Talon headquarters now we see this very impressive statue don't read too much into it it may well be Juno if, because we're in Italy it has already featured as well in Ilios as probably Hera now given that ancient Roman and Greek mythology are very intertwined in places with a lot of similar gods and borrowing from both directions we can say as Juno she's an ancient Roman goddess the protector of the state a daughter of Saturn the wife of Jupiter king of the gods and the mother of many gods such as Mars Vulcan Bologna and Juventus familiar of course if you like me like a little bit of ancient myths and legends as well as classical civilization or alternatively you play a game like Smite. One can assume that we're therefore delivering the payload a package to Talon headquarters. If we look underneath Talon's HQ then we get a hint as to what it is we might be delivering. Now whether these are legacy from Antonio's days or whether we're in the present day still it seems that Talon is still very very kitted out in the arms department. We can see rifles, pistols, shotguns, heavy weapons and machine guns. Talon have serious arms dealing still in their arsenal. And perhaps to the highest bidder, there's a lot of firepower here. As we go upstairs from the council room in the main room, which is the final payload resting point, we can see as one of the spawns what must be the Talon council room. Now, I love the vibe. You can see plotting the large organisational logo, the embossed logos of Talon on the presumably leather chairs, just in case you forgot whose headquarters you're in. Now, there are two schools of thought here as to how we can have a look at this. We can say everything that we've seen in the past is canon, or we can interpret it a bit more loosely as the Overwatch team's ideas, as they have done many times, 
programs over the last three or four years evolving over time. So is this the same building as eight years ago in the events of retribution? Well, you could argue perhaps they're different rooms or buildings, or maybe they're the same building and the layout has just been tweaked around a bit. The layout is not quite the same one shown in Masquerade, but this comic was produced around Doomfist's release, which is a, probably quite a while before the level was even started being made. So in Masquerade, we can see a bunch of chairs around the table. In the level of Rialto, there's a few less. Who sits at these chairs? Well, in the past on the Talon Council, we've known of Antonio. We presume he's deceased. He's been shotgunned by rares and hit out of a window. Viali in the past would have also probably sat here. He is mentioned by Reyes in the events of Retribution as being one of the people who would probably take over from Antonio. However, in the events of Masquerade, close to the present day of Overwatch, we know that he has been given some heavy-handed treatment, presumably killed by Doomfist. In the Masquerade comic, we see Sanjay of Talon, Sanjay Corpol, that we've seen in Symmetra's comic, A Better World. Also Moira, of course, who was teased before she released in this comic, and of course the Omnic Casino owner and money man Maximilian. Now with Reyes and Doomfist also taking a seat at the council table, there are potentially four other council members in this shot from Masquerade that we haven't seen identified yet. The table isn't full when the meeting begins, and if it was, then maybe there were another six or seven members who couldn't attend perhaps. Well, Viali, if he's been pushed off a bridge, certainly is rather indisposed right now, so at least that counts for one. Okay, that's our tour around the map and having a look at some of the details. Finally, a little bit of a speculation on Rialto and what it may bring up for us in lore in future. My first thoughts, is Antonio still alive? Well, a lot of people have liked to speculate off the back of the little bit of cinematic in Retribution, saying that this soldier, this Talon Grunt, doesn't look too surprised. I don't know about that. I think maybe it's kind of done for sort of comic effect very, very slightly, but who knows on that one? Was there some conspiracy to kill Antonio? Was Reyes involved in this beforehand? We don't actually know when Reyes first started getting involved with Talon, but I would say at this moment in time, it seems that he's very anti them at this point. I can't see him working with them right now, but who knows? Something interesting is what's happened since Retribution in the last eight or so years, if this mission was eight years ago. Well, if Talon are still operating in present-day Rialto, in present-day Venice, then clearly whatever happened after the Venice incident was brought to light didn't stop them from, at some point, re-establishing their operations. Eight years ago, at the time of Retribution, Talon were a force that could still strike Overwatch without seemingly any direct response possible on Overwatch's behalf, hence why Blackwatch was sent in. Of course, in the present day of Overwatch, eight years later, this force can strike around the world, this organisation can drop into London, into Houston, Texas and other places at will, seemingly without any response from the governments of major countries. My final thought is, well, as Talon's seeming base of power at this point in time, with Doomfist back in charge as well, and saying at the end of the Masquerade comic that there's a war to start, what are Talon going to be doing now, and how is the Overwatch story going to move forward from here? How are Talon going to start this war? I'd love to hear your thoughts on Overwatch Retribution, any lore theories or anything else you have in the comments. I'm going to be doing a lore summary episode where we talk about everyone's different theories and which ways they could work in the next few days. Thanks so much for tuning in to this Overwatch lore tour of Rialto, along with a few details, easter eggs, and a bit of speculation too. If you like Overwatch lore and story, I've been covering it for nearly two years, everything from comics to skin lore, map lore, hero releases, hero lore, interactions and voice lines, and more. It's all in the playlist below. A big thanks to my patrons on Patreon who help me keep making longer lore videos for you. If you'd like to see how you can support from just a dollar a month, please take a click through at patreon.com forward slash hammy. Cheers for tuning in. I've been Hammy. Take it easy.